From his early youth up to the last hour of his life in the world, the Lord's life was one continuous struggle and one continuous victory, as many passages in the Old Testament word indicate. The Lord's trials did not end with the test he faced in the wilderness, as these words in Luke show. After the devil finished with all this testing, he left Jesus alone for a while. The same thing can be seen from the consideration that the Lord was tested up till his death on the cross, and so to the last hour of his life in the world. This evidence makes it clear that the Lord's whole life in the world, from early youth on, consisted of constant trials and constant victories, the last of which occurred on the cross, where he prayed for his enemies, and so for everyone, everywhere in the world. So it's not like there's been sort of... um this idea put forward that the whole point of Jesus coming was the cross. You've got God is angry, he needs, somebody needs to get on that cross, and then, then that was the whole point. Everything else was just sort of leading up to that. Swedenborg described that the cross is the cap on the end of, this is the, the finale, but the whole life was, was the same process. The, the work Jesus was doing all throughout his life was all important, and it all needed to happen. Because oh, otherwise, why didn't he just appear at 33 years old and, and just have the one week be his whole life? You know, he does this in order because he's laying the groundwork through all these different struggles. He's doing work the whole time. It's not like he had a big vacation to start it. So the cross is meaningful, but it's not the meaning. It's, it's part it's a part of the whole thing. So, what was it though? What was the meaning of the cross? So, you remember back before I said we would keep you watching by not telling you how Jesus was struggling against the angels. So, you must still be watching. So, your reward is we're returning to that now. Uh, we're going to talk about what Jesus went on, went through on the cross and how that had to do with even the heavens. And again, for our, let's let's bear, bid farewell to, to our friend Jonathan Rose. Cause this is really fun because he, he he really has studied a lot of this stuff, so it was cool just getting to sit down and hear him talk about it all. And this is our last clip from that, and it's explaining the meaning of the, of the time on the cross. Yes, what is the crucifixion all about? What a great mystery. It's so clearly portrayed in the Gospels, and yet we don't really know what was he doing. There's different theories about what he was doing and what was going on there. Um, a very interesting teaching to me and one that I wrestled with a lot that Swedenborg says. Fascinating to me. Uh, how to set this up. Uh, you would think, like a lot of movies are structured in the way that, you know, let's say you're James Bond or something like that. You fight this sort of assistant and then you fight the general manager guy, <laughs> and then finally you get back to the kingpin and you fight him at the end of the movie. Swedenborg says it went absolutely the opposite way around with Jesus, that he actually fought the worst devils from the lowest hell at the beginning when he was very, very young, and they weren't hard for him to deal with. It's not difficult to deal with the really obviously evil. This is hidden in the, in the inner meaning of the story when Moses is able to discern between a Hebrew and an Egyptian who are fighting. But the next day he sees two Hebrews fighting and it's harder to tell who, whose side am I on, you know, who do I side with in this exchange. That's a, an interesting little picture of the, the way that Jesus' battles went, that he actually, when he was young, he dealt with the worst, the worst evil spirits were at the beginning and he worked his way up. And he not only worked his way through all the evil spirits, but it, this is a very strange teaching. I don't think this is anywhere in the world that, that this has been revealed before. Uh, but at the very end of his life, who Jesus was dealing with were the people in the highest heavens were letting him down. Not that they were attacking him, but just that they were falling short. He had rolled down all the way through till at the point of the crucifixion, the people he was dealing with were people who didn't really believe he could do it or didn't think the crucifixion was a good idea or whatever. And this was causing him a very profound kind of inward agony because these were his homies, you know, these were his friends. Uh, you know, it says something in the, in the uh, Old Testament about the wounds that I suffered in the house of my friends. Uh, the, the, some of the most challenging things. And you see an image of this in the New Testament, don't you? Because the 12 disciples, or in, 
in a lot of the Gospels, all 12 abandon him. In the Gospel of John, John is still hanging out there by the cross, but but they, most of them just like flee. It says, I'll smite the, the shepherd and scatter the sheep, you know? And that's a picture of the way that the angels, even the angels were like, couldn't hang in there, couldn't couldn't take it anymore. Even the, his support group was, was, was letting him down. Not that he wasn't being attacked by the hell at that time, because they were full on. They were like rejoicing, like, hey, we won. You know, they felt like, hey, yeah, yeah, we, we, we've done it. We killed him, you know, like we succeeded. We succeeded. That parable about the killing the vineyard owner's son, you know, like the, here's the, he's the heir. Let's kill him and then we can take over the vineyard and everything. And they kill him, they think they're winning. And I think he actually let them, in a weird way, I think he let them feel like they won. Uh, but he was resurrected and, and larger than life and eternal and indestructible, you know, it, it, like he just went up to the next level. The specific struggle that Jesus was going through in the crucifixion uh, was, it seems clear to me, that to keep being loving, to keep coming from love, when you're being tortured, you know, you've been kept up all night, you're, you're being tortured, you're being passed from pillar to post, you're beaten, you're whipped, you're, you're you know, put the crown of thorns on and all that stuff and just keep coming from love. I don't think we understand. You know, we would all fail that test. But I would, I would, I would just be a flaming rage, you know, <laughs> or so you like, I would fail that test. You know, hell wants to sort of bait you into getting down on their level and getting angry or something like that. He keeps coming from love. He says, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. And he was able to succeed in that greatest of all tests. So that was the ultimate test. That was the ultimate test, the hardest test that he ever went through. And I think it wasn't just that he was being tested by the highest heavens. It was the whole package. The hells, the heavens, everybody kind of letting him down. And obviously some sense that he had failed. He felt abandoned by the Father and everything. It was a very, you see him sweating drops like blood in the Garden of Gethsemane in, in agony the night before. And uh, it, it was really, really challenging. And I think it had to do with both how people were letting him down, even the good people, and how difficult it was to maintain coming from love when you're being physically tormented and tortured to death. And that was, a, that was a, a unbelievable challenge that we can't even imagine what he went through. And not only that, but the work that he did opens up a path for us. That there, there's because it, it's all connected, heaven and hell, the psyche. So the ordering that he did in there, through all these battles and these struggles, opens a path for us to to kind of work on our own cross. Uh, which is there's a, the concept out there that that we have this same struggle. And how do we do it, and how does it show up, and what can we learn about our own battle from the spiritual battles of Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm.